Hello and welcome back to IR News. Here we discuss current issues relating to industrial relation as a part of our effort in enhancing Malaysian IR awareness. Today we have two very interesting issues to be discussed and both are related to industrial disputes. One happened in Bandar Baru Bangi, Selangor and the other one happened in Ipoh, Perak. All right, let's not waste our time. The first issue happens at Nichon, Bandar Baru Bangi, Selangor. And today, we have Mr. Muhammad Akram live on a video call. Mr. Muhammad Akram is one of our reporter in Selangor and he will explain to us more about what happened in Nichon. Hello, Mr. Muhammad Akram. Are you there? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Daniel from the studio for the latest program of the current issue. We can happen at the Nichiko headquarters, Malaysia at Bandar Baru Bangi, Selangor. Involve the Electronic Industry Employees Union Western Radio Peninsula Malaysia, EIEU WPRN, and Nichikon Company. Nichikon workers have a peaceful picket following a direct procedure, only anti provocation done by Mr. Bukhari Muhammad Ami, the Industry Relations Manager of Nichikon and Sandrian Bahar. According to the Nichikan workers, the situation started to be contest after Mr. Bukhari appeared on the scene for about 10 minutes, bashing in front of the picket line with a handful in hand and fearing to be video recording, disturb the peace of the TM. Due to the inferiority that the management who identified his worker through Mr. Bukhari recording and used to harass, intimidate and victimize. This picket member tried to stop Mr. Bukhari action by loudly jeering at him, and it indirectly created chaos moment for a while. Unfortunately, Mr. Bukhari has missed that police by insisting that it is an illegal assembly, whereas it is a picket organized by the union near the place of work of each member under the Industrial Relations Act. He also issued a threat that the company is studying the legal aspect to take disciplinary action against any employee involved in the assembly that is defaming. This action is a form of intimidation, interfering and threatening. According to Section 8, Section 16, 1 of IRA, Mr. Bukhari is liable to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 2 years, up to a fine not exceeding 5,000 ringgit or to boost. Okay, that's all I can share for now. We back to Mr. Daniel. Thank you, Mr. Akram. What happened at Nichon was really unfortunate. But now, let's get a bit technical and discuss the legal side of this issue. We have here on another video call line, Mr. Shafiq Ayman, our industrial law specialist. Hello, Mr. Shafiq. Mr. Shafiq, can you help us uh, give us your input on related statutory laws and maybe compare and contrast those laws with what happened in Nichon? Shafiq? Hello, Mr. Daniel. Thank you for calling me. Uh, about the issue that occurs in Nichicon Factory, the law that we can see are Section 4, Section 5, Section 8, Section 38, Subsection D, Section 54, and Section 60, Subsection 1, Clause A of the Industrial Relations Act 1967 and the Peaceful Assembly Act 2012, Section 1, Subsection 3, Clause B. In the Section 4, Industrial Relations Act 1967, the law states that the boss or manager of the organization cannot stop the employees from joining or participate in the trade union. You also cannot force them for not joining the particular union. Uh, in section 5, the law say that employer cannot dismiss or threaten to dismiss a workman, injured or threaten to injure in his employment, or alter or threaten to alter his position to his prejudice by the reason that the workman participates in the promotion, formation and activities of a trade union. In this case, the employer cannot trade the employees because of them participating in the picket. Supposedly, the employer of 
uh, or in this case uh, the Nishikon cannot interfere to their employees lawful activities such as picket uh, because this is uh, the employees right that already stated by the law okay before that Bohari Muhammad Amin the industrial relation manager of Nishikon Malaysia Serian Berhad said that the union had an agreement made during the consultation meeting at the industrial relation department on December, December 16, 2019 but his statement are contrary with section 54 of the industrial relation act in the proceedings before the court no proof of any settlement or consultation uh, proceeding shall be presented other than a written statement agreed upon and signed by the parties to the dispute in regard the, uh, to the dispute Buhari also seemed to have misled the police by insisting that if it, if it is a picket organized by the union close to the workplace of its member under the Industrial Relations Act, it is an illegal assembly. Um, according to the Peaceful Assembly Act 2012, Section 1, Subsection 3, Clause B, uh, any strike, lockout or picket under the Industrial Relations Act 1967 and the Trade Union Act 1959 uh, shall not apply to this Act. We also can see that Buhari was prohibited the Section uh, 38 subsection D of the Industrial Relations Act when he interfered in the exercise of the right of the union member and its officers through uh, the letter that threatened disciplinary action which is uh, against the section 4 and 5 of the Industrial Relation Act uh, the union also can use uh, section 8 reference to the complaint to industrial court same as section 60 subsection 1 clause A uh, which say any person who contributes uh, to any provision of this act shall be guilty of an offence and shall on conviction where no express penalty is provided uh, be liable to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 2 years or to fine not exceeding 5,000 ringgit Malaysia or both uh, so it is a right action that uh, take by the union in order to defend their rights uh, I think that's all from me thank you Mr. Daniel thank you Mr. Shafiq for that insightful elaboration Moving on, our second case happened at Hospital Raja Permaisuri Bainun in Ipoh, Perak. On our video call, we have Mrs. Shahirah Alia, one of our reporter in Ipoh, and she will help explain what happened at the hospital. Hello, are you there, Mrs. Shahirah? Hello, Mr. Daniel, and welcome to your iArt News with me, Shahirah Alia Binti Zuni. Petaling Jaya, a national union for hospital cleaners, is claiming that a government-linked subcontract or agenda UMS Sendian Berhad, which was hired to manage cleaning at public, public hospital, is exploiting workers. M. Saraswati from the National Union of work Workers in Hospital Support and Allied Service, who is now facing charge for picketing during the CMCO last week. She claimed that during this time, the company had failed to provide cleaners with an adequate supply of PPE. Despite that, she claimed the workers were asked to clean the toilets and hospital wards. She said cleaners had also complained of a much higher workload. Members of the union had protested outside the Hospital Raja Permaisuri Bainun HRPB in Ipoh last Wednesday, claiming they had been subjected to intimidation and union busting since early this year. Following the protest, five of those who picketing were arrested by police and have been charged under the Prevention and Control of Infection Disease at 1988 as well as Section 186 and 269 of Criminal Procedure Code, CPC. UEM Agenda Berhad denied by stating that it had implementation, action and safety measures to safeguard and the health and safety of its employees to face the COVID-19 pandemic. The company is also committed to resolving the internal matters impacting its employees in an amicable manner by also engaging the relevant authorities such as the Labor Department whenever required. Also, the company denied union busting allegations saying its operating model had allowed for better terms to be afforded to the workers. It said their basic salary was increased. 
it said the matter had also been referred to the industrial court but that proceedings had been postponed due to the MCO. M. Saraswati claimed that the arrest of five union members was wrongful as they had followed SOPs, including social distancing. She said the union had asked the government to recognize hospital cleaners as essential frontline workers and absorb them into the government instead of washing their hands of the matter. She also said Agenda UEMS and Berhad must stop union busting activities and intimidating or harassing the workers. Thank you and that's all from me. Let's back to our Mr. Daniel. Thank you, Ms. Shahira. I really hope that the hospital cleaners will get the justice that they deserved. Now, you guys must be wondering about the related statutory laws in these issues. It's quite unclear. Yes, but don't worry because we have another industrial law specialist and just like Mr. Shafiq, she is one of our best. Ms. Nur Shuaiba will be giving us her input on the related statutory laws as well as compare and contrast those laws with the issue that is happening in the hospital. Hello, Ms. Shuaiba. Thank you, Mr. Daniel. Well, okay. Back to this case between National Union of Workers in Hospital Support and Allied Service and UWHSAS and government linked subcontractor Agenta UEM Sunyam Berhad. First of all, should any trade dispute exist, it is lawful for the workmen to institute picketing action. According to Industry Relations Section 40 in Bracket 1, a picket must not obstruct the entrance or exit to the workplace. Involved by only workers, picketing should be peaceful and not intimidating anyone. No police permit is required for a picket, neither they can be dispersed by the police. So in conclusion, picket is a legal activity. But should this event happen in June 2020, where the Conditional Movement Control Order was implemented, picketing, gathering in a big number of members, become illegal under the Prevention and Control of Infectious Disease Order 2020. Five union members that day arrested due to not follow SOPs, including social distancing during picketing. Hence why the union is now facing charges for violating the order. So, in conclusion, picketing is legal. But in this case, as it was done during CMCO, it become illegal. But the main issue that leads to this picketing is due to few things. Well, firstly, union claim about Agenta UEM as Senyam Berhad failed to provide adequate supply of personal protective equipment, PPE. One of the implied duty of employer is providing a safe working environment for his or her employee. So with this issue being raised, it is clear that at Genta UEM Senyam Berhad hasn't done their best part. Secondly, the protest workers also claim that they had been subjected to intimidation and union busting since early 2020. At Genta UEMS, of course, rejecting the claim, and whether it is true or not, was not yet finalised. But generally, union busting, where company fire employee for union activities, is a big no, unless it is proven that activities are not complied to law. Yet, if it is done with full respect and followed the correct guideline, at Genta UEMS has no right to stop or interfere the picketing. So as what stated in Section 4, Industry Relation, no person shall interfere with, restrain or coerce a workman or an employer, well in this case is the employees, of his exercise of right to form and assist in the formations of join a trade union and to participate in its lawful activities. So if it is proven that at Genta company is trying to union busting, definitely it is unlawful. As overall, this issue might be a bit challenging due to the employment contract bond between this party. Contractor for Labour Section 2 Employment Act bind at Genta with government, at Genta as the contractor, while government as the principal or owner. But on the other hand, contract for service bind protest workers with Agenta, where protest worker as employee and Agenta as their employer. So, should this protest worker have any issue in working, they should refer and discuss with Agenta, which is their employer, because government has limited interference as it only plays the role as the principal and the work management issue is not under their liability. So, protest worker must know with who they should discuss 
work methods. And another is that for the union side, in their negotiation with employer at Genta, they must note that collective agreement must not include items of managerial prerogative, which can be classified such as the promotion, transfer, employment, termination, dismissal and reinstatement and assignment of allocation according to section 13 in bracket 3. So, for the union side, they must be wise in their negotiation and know their boundaries. Well, to be honest, I have a lot more to share, but in brief about this case, I think that's all for now. So, back to Mr. Daniel at the studio. Thank you, Ms. Shuaiba, for that crystal clear explanation. Wow, we've learned a lot today, but it will not be complete without a proper conclusion and a few recommendations from Ms. Noshamimi Amira. Hello, Ms. Shamimi, can you do the honour? Thank you, Mr. Daniel. As is known, picketing is the most common form of industrial action taken by the workers. So, as we can conclude that, from both issues, a picketing is a good stage for the picketers or protesters to voice out their dissatisfactions, whereby the purpose of conducting a picketing is to solve the dispute between the two parties. The employee can easily convey their message to the public through a media and this is also a proper way for them to solve the problem in a peaceful conditions. Despite that, picketing needs to be carried out within the confines of the law and there is no need to disperse by the police as picketing is one of legal activity according to Malaysian's industrial law. In addition, industrial action should only be taken if it is not possible to resolve a dispute by other means, um, as it can be costly and damaging to both sides, and there are likely to be formal arrangements for resolving dispute which usually involve the union. Actually, there are numbers of ways to sort out a problem at work in which it can be used to uh, avoid industrial actions, which is uh, firstly, employees need to manage relationships and to minimize the conflict that happen between their employees. As we know, conflict in the workplace can have a negative effect on the day-to-day -day working. It also can affect the general health and well-being of your employees. Besides, good relationship between employer and employees also are the key in creating a productive working environment. So it is important for the employer to encourage a workplace culture that can prevent a conflict from arising. Another recommendation is uh, what can employee do in settling the industrial dispute is to encourage employer and employee to join consultation in industry. And it's become a practice for worker and employer to form a joint consultative committee at the workplace. This can help the two parties uh, that having a conflict to settle the dispute and to be able to work together after that. On top of that, arrangement to inform and consult means there is ongoing communications between your employer and their employees. This also should uh, involve any important development that could affect the people who work in the organizations. Besides, employee also can make a complaint under the Department of Labor regarding to their workplace right. Employee has right where they should be treated fairly at the work, uh, to work in a safe and healthy workplace, to be trained to deal with a workplace hazard, and also to join a trade union. This is because referring to one issue about the cleaner in the work hospital, it is important for the employer to provide adequate supply of personal uh, protective equipment, PPE, during these current situations as it is included in one of their rights as an employee. I think that's all from me. Thank you, Ms. Shamimi. Well, viewers, that's all the time that we have. Thank you for watching and see you guys next week on another episode of IR News. My name is Daniel Mohayai, signing off.